Okay, so I'm going to uh, go through this dynamic component here and uh, show some uh, workarounds that I have for uh, getting some faces on here and um, discuss a little bit about what I feel we should be able to do with dynamic components. Uh, first, uh, I'm going to be using a macro editor. It's called Keyboard Maestro. Um, this is it. It's a, a Mac app. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a Windows solution that works this well or not, but uh, I mean, I've tried a few different editors before. Nothing's been this powerful. I mean, with this, I can, if I want, I could draw a sphere uh, with input. You know, I could put in my dimensions or whatever, and it does it. Etc. Etc. But that's beside the point. Uh, I actually do have this um, launch SketchUp that's oh, right here. Uh, what this does, it's it's not on right now. It's um. Anyways, when I launch SketchUp, it triggers this to happen. It waits for a second, brings focus to the window closes the window, and then opens a new one. And that's because on Mac, when you launch SketchUp, none of these custom toolbar icons show up until you launch a new window. So anyways, no, when I launch SketchUp, these are all there without me having to do anything. I don't quite have it set up right yet. That's why I have it turned off. The problem, you know, when I, if I double click on a file that I want to work in, it'll close that and give me a fresh window. So I got to sort that out. Anyways, for this, I have this one called SketchUp Faces. Um, so I got Shift Apple M triggers all this to happen. Uh, these are all keystrokes, but I mean, there's tons of different actions that you can use. Um, but yeah, so I'm just using all keystrokes for this. So if I push this in SketchUp, what's going to happen is uh, it does a series. Uh, Shift E that opens a component for editing. Apple A is going to select everything inside. K explodes. And then I have a second explode just in case I have components inside of components. Inside of components. Uh, Shift F. This is a uh, generate faces. It comes with a uh, Frito. Fredo. Frito it comes with his uh, tools on surface. Uh, basically, generates faces from edges, and then uh, this exits the component editing. So yeah, if I push this key, you know, this keystroke while I'm in SketchUp, all of these things are gonna happen, and it's fast. Uh, as you will see with this. So anyways, yeah, that's, you know, you see all these, I have a, let me see, I have a cap in here, you know, I have a stringer in here. I have these walls. None of these things have faces. They're all, you know, like uh, this cap, for instance. This is just a collection of edges and faces. Like this little thing, it's its own dynamic component, you know, and I have to do these just weird methods to get these like lengths and uh, positions and et cetera. So this one component is actually six individual dynamic components. 
Uh, it takes a while to make. And then you're left with all these edges and faces in your component. Uh, probably the hardest ones to do here, or which seem like they should be the simplest, and that was these studs. Uh, I mean, this is the stud. These, these are just copies of it, but... You know, like I say, this little, that's its own dynamic component. This, this, and that. You know, and each one has to adjust its length individually, its angle. Um, and I feel like we should be able to uh, draw a little 2 by 4 here. What I feel like we should be able to do is go inside of a component and assign this edge, for instance, to do something. You know, that's what I want my component to be. The problem, obviously, is if I scale it, that you lose that angle. So, It'd be nice if we could lock this edge, keep it proportionate to this edge, or whatever, uh, assign it. I guess it would be um, tangent of pitch times inch and a half, you know, keeps, that would give us that length or whatever, and we always want to keep that the same. And if we could do that, you know, this would be its own solid component, dynamic. There's only, you know, it's not made up of all these little pieces. It's already faced, etc. I mean, I'm sure you guys already know this, but I don't know if it's possible to do. In my head, it seems super possible, but... I mean, that's kind of my main wish with these things. But, like I said, I, I'll, I'll show you my work around how I've been getting these things solid. Uh, I guess I, I have an, another layer set up with dimensions. This is awesome. This is really what I need this component for. Uh, this view, this is just pretty, you know, I want these solid just so it's pretty in the model or whatever, but as far as on the job calculations, etc., this is the money here. Uh, you know, these dimensions they they also update with let's say we want a nine foot or nine foot final height. You know, since this since these are all copies of this, dimensions are added to that. So it's just, I mean, it's just a cut list waiting to happen. Uh, you know, give give these dimensions to the guys. They'll cut it, put this triangle together here, put the stringer on, can fill these in. Done. No head scratching, no measuring these boards to fit or whatever. But and no, you know, it's my time on the computer while on the job site where this is really uh, worth it. I don't mind spending hours making this if it saves me 15 minutes on the job. 15 minutes on the job is a lot more valuable than five hours in the middle of the night to me, so whatever. This is the money here. Uh, and this is great. You know, I'm planning on filling in some more stuff here, my rise, my run. The rest of my cut list will go in here, I guess. Or I still haven't figured that out, but it, anyways, let's get back to uh, SketchUp. So, uh, yeah, this this all works. Um, generally, I cut my stringer out of a 2x10 and uh, put a 2x12 cap on the outside of it, but uh, 
and then these are all two by twelves and two by eights. But I, you know, I added it, added some options just in case. You know, who like that's my riser thickness changing. But uh, the way I assemble these things, that doesn't really work. But it's just gonna give me a stringer maker for other situations. But um. I don't really need too many options. So say we have a wall, I don't know, uh, 89 and a half inches, uh, overall width, four feet. Keep this all the same. All right, so we, we have our stairs, everything's right. Now I want to come in here and face all of these. Uh, let's go in the outliner. Yeah, again, as you can see, like the stringer, for instance, I want that to be one solid component. Right now, it's all of these. You know, it's every little face. Each riser face has a copy. There's like 25 things there or whatever, and I want it to be just one. So if I select my stringer and then run my macro, uh, it just, see the stringer now has nothing under it. It's just one thing. Uh, move it up here so you can see. Um, where's my entity info? Yeah, these dynamic components throw this thing around a lot. It's weird. You guys gotta fix that too. <laughs> so, anyways, my stringer, it's called stringer. You know, it's the name didn't change. Uh, it's solid. It's just one one thing. That's exactly what I want it to be. So uh, I would just run through and but I would do it on my cap. Uh, sometimes that happens. Let me just uh, orient my face. Uh, the walls are a little bit different here. I want to keep these separate, so I'll keep a separate top plate. Bottom, the bottom plate works as a regular dynamic component. You know, you can't really cut these real long angles on the job, so we just keep them square cut. Uh, the studs is a little bit of a problem because it's gonna, I mean it faces them all just fine. It's, but all of these are one component. I mean I, that, that's fine because it's not really gonna be doing anything different. Uh, this, the treads Ooh, you've got mail. The treads are done. They they'll stay the same. So, anyways, uh, we just made our model a lot lighter, or maybe not necessarily lighter, but um, just got rid of all those components in there that were making up these individual things uh, and then what I do is uh, I'll mirror them this is a TIGS mirror ruby um, yeah there's a re I can't do the cop if I did these copies originally before I do all that exploding it just doesn't work out right so uh the mirror thing, that's another step I have to do in this workaround, but that one's painless. So, yeah, we're left with, these are, for instance, you know, these are still components of each other, mirrors of each other, which is awesome. Um, I just feel we should be able to arrive at 
this without that workaround. I mean, the workaround's not that bad. The one thing that's kind of bad is making the component work. There's, there's just so much extra steps in order to, to do that that I feel is unnecessary. And uh, another thing, I mean, this is a, a somewhat of a simple example, you know. Um, I have some ideas to make components of uh, some more, th some of the complex stuff that I build. And these workaround things are just kind of putting me off from it, but... Uh, Anyways, uh, thanks for watching, etc. Hope you guys can fix some of this stuff, or or maybe even tell me, hey, we're not gonna fix this stuff. Whatever. All right, see you.